it would have been called a case of David and Goliath, except this time Goliath did not uh, manage to overpower, uh, David rather did not manage to overpower Goliath. We had the complaint initially lodged by Big Daddies in 2004. It was overturned this time by the uh, tribunal saying it was out of its jurisdiction. Uh, Michael, you were at the tribunal hearings. Can you give us some insight into what went down? I think it was, a, it was a slightly surprising outcome yesterday. The, um, the expectation wasn't so much that the tribunal would uh, agree completely with the argument SAB had made, but rather with parts of it and give part of the, part of the win to the Commission. Instead, it went completely with SAB um, in a decision that clearly seemed to pain the tribunal. You know, somebody told me the, um, the members of the tribunal had been up most of the night thinking about the judgment and working out how, what, what they should do. So yes, it was a, a decision that took uh, most people by surprise. Now, Lara, the decision by the tribunal appears to be based on a previous decision by the Competition Appeals Court stating that uh, Sassel and, uh, based on the Sassel and Omnia hearing where uh, the original uh, claim was not the same as the one brought forward to the court. Can you explain how the claim in this case was different? Right. Um, this, this decision follows on from a, a number of recent Superior Court decisions which um, look at the nature of the complaint and what was ultimately referred to the Competition Tribunal. In this case, um, the original complainant had said, SAB is selling its beer to wholesalers such as me at the This. Uh, is, is the tribunal being undermined by, um, by higher courts? Well, I, I think it's not one or the other. I think that one can create a system that is both accessible and expedient, um, but that also protects the rights of respondents. And I'm not sure that we've met that balance yet. What is, what is the balance? How do you achieve that balance? Well, I think that the tribunal has the rights, for instance, to play an inquisitorial role, to set its own procedures, etc. Um, but it must take a, it, sh it needs to take a very activist role in determining what those procedures are and where the balance should, should sit. Um, at the moment, it seems to be swinging from um, extreme deference to the commission on the one hand, and and then and then being sort of hamstrung by the higher courts in a more traditional civil litigation. But last year, the uh, Competition Appeals Court did scold. Um, the tribunal for um, apparently uh, molding evidence to fit into its theory of uh, principle on, on a certain matter. So perhaps this time around it chose to go with the, you know, the high court precedents as a result of that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, essentially, it is in many ways like a court procedure, and things like evidence have to be taken into account. And just because the Commission is performing a very important public interest role doesn't mean that um, it should win out 
um, over what the evidence actually proves. And I think that was the, the issue in that particular case. Very quickly, uh, SAB, obviously a dominant market player. This is not the first time that we've heard it abusing its powers in the South African markets. Do you think um, we're going to have more cases being brought forward or is this the end of the road for the smaller players like Big Daddies? Oh, it's certainly not the end of the road. I mean, it's, uh, and, and by that, I don't think it means that their business model is under threat. You know, SAB has consistently responded throughout this thing that, look, it's up to us to structure our business in the way that suits us the best. Um, now, the question of whether that structure is actually disadvantageous to other players in the market hasn't been tested. And because of yesterday's ruling, it looks like it's not going to be tested.